Hello, everyone. My name is Anne Tran from the Ace Business School, formerly CAST at the City University of London. Uh, I'm very pleased today to talk to you about insider trading. It's a pretty hot topic at the moment, and uh, it's also somewhat related to the research that I've been doing with my co-authors. So I'm going to talk about our recent uh, working paper on uh, when and how our Rule 10b5-1 plans used for insider stock sales. Uh, joint work with Ellie Fish from Drexel University and Bob Carino at University of Texas at Austin. So as you read the newspapers uh, uh, recently, uh, there have been widespread coverage on uh, top executive uh, making like huge sales of their stock, uh, timing uh, the events that they have. Uh, for example, a Moderna executives hide the stock sales after announcing positive vaccine trial, or a Pfizer CEO sold almost six million in stock in pre-planned sales on the day of the vaccine news release. So, in the wake of trading gains realized by those pharma executives when positive vaccine news came to light uh, recently, which followed by the remarks by outgoing SEC chair. Uh, Jay Clayton about good corporate hygiene for trading plans. This kind of safe harbor provision has been back in the spotlight. So first, this kind of rule 10 5 plans when designed and administered appropriately, it can actually facilitate long-term interest alignment and are the principles of good corporate governance. And secondly, a well-designed insider trading policy actually should have some controls in place to prevent senior executives and member of the board directors from trading once a company is in possession of material non-public information. Several U.S. senators actually sent this letter to acting SEC Chair Allison Heron Lee asking the SEC to re-examine its policy on Rule 10b5 plans to improve transparency, enforcement, and incentives. And under SEC rule, company executives can create 10b5-1 plans to establish schedule to sell company stock while obtaining the safe harbor from inside the trading rules. But Senator's February letter actually revealed a number of concerns about the abuse of these plans. And on April 27, uh, 2021, Senator Warren actually sent another letter to the SEC uh, calling for an investigation to emerging biosolutions CEO Robert Kramer sales of 10 million worth of stock under the 10B5-1 plan prior to public disclosures that the company had actually ruined 15 million doses of Johnson & Johnson COVID vaccine. And the report actually showed uh, Kramer had ample knowledge of production of issues when he scheduled the sale off. And uh, Senator Warren actually says emerging CEOs appear to have engaged in pandemic profiteering under the guise of Rule 10b5 plan. He personally profited from millions of dollars of taxpayer funded contracts while the company he led caused critical delays in the COVID-19 response. And then he protected his personal profit by selling his stock at inflated prices before the company disclosed the failure. So abuses from executives like uh, this, uh, combined with the 10 b 5 one plans, uh, lack of transparency actually hurts investors and risk undermining public confidence, which is why the senator actually urged the SEC to investigate and consider reforming the rule. So this SEC Rule 10b5-1 plan uh, provides guidelines through which insiders who sell or purchase the firm stocks can establish some kind of affirmative defense against insider trading allegation. To qualify for protection under Rule 10b5 plan, executives enter into a non-binding contract that instructs a third party to execute trades on behalf of, uh, according to a written plan known as the 10b5 plan. And this plan must be adopted 
at the time when the executive is not aware of material non-public information that can provide some informational advantage to the executive compared to a normal outside investor. So this plan can specify a set of instructions or schedule by which the trades are to be made. For example, the number of, or the value of the shares to be transacted, the frequency of the transaction, the price limit. And what we know so far is that under this 10 b 5 plan, managers can actually change the quantity of the shares. They can use limit orders to cancel trades and they can also execute trades outside of the plan. And this is very uh, helpful if they know that the company will be announcing news that will push the stock price higher. And what we don't know is that uh, we don't know about the characteristics of those trades under the 10 b 5 one plan versus the one outside of the plans. How are they different? And whether the plan is actually effective in reducing opportunities among the executives. And we don't know the channels through which CEOs can actually circumvent the rules original intent and uh, profit personally. And we don't know whether there is a role of corporate governance in, uh, in helping uh, the SEC or in helping the, the company to improve corporate transparency in terms of using the, trans, uh, the 10 b 5 one plan. So these are the items that we will try to examine in our research. The literature has been long and very crowded on insider trading and abnormal profits has been well documented uh, in the literature. And it's also been documented on the effectiveness of external and internal governance mechanism in reducing abnormal profits to insider trading. There's also a little literature on rule 10 b 5 one plan specific uh, evidence. Participating insider sales actually can follow positive and precede negative firm performance to generate abnormal forward-looking returns, larger than those earned by non-participating colleagues. And CEOs and CFOs who sell under the plans may be more likely to engage in strategic behavior to meet or beat earnings expectation to maximize the proceeds from plan sales. And recent research also uh, conduct uh, on the examination of uh, Rule 10 b 5 one repurchases. So what we are interested in our paper is on the trade characteristics and are certain trade features related to the effectiveness of the plan and what are the mechanisms that the CEO can use to circumvent the, uh, the original intent of the plan. Let me go over the main findings. We find that this rule 10b5-1 plan is more likely to be used when litigation risk is high, when the uncertainty about the stock price is high, and when the sale is scheduled before the release of material non-public information. Overall, uh, the planned sales are associated with less opportunistic behavior than non-planned sales as intended, but this is not true when the CEO has a lot at stake. And we also look at uh, disclosure quality, accounting accrual, a measure of real earnings, management activities, and earnings announcement. We find that CEOs with strong incentives actually trade on material non-public information, even under the plan. So that's striking. And good governance can actually substitute for the presence of the plan in limiting opportunities but only when the CEOs don't have very strong incentive to behave opportunistically. So we measure strong incentive or not using the fraction of transaction value relative to the CEO's firm related wealth. So if the transaction, the sales, uh, has the amount of dollar that is 
relatively very large compared to the CEO personal wealth. That means the transaction is very important, has a lot of money at stake for the CEO. To conduct our research, uh, we obtained almost 14,000 stock sales by CEOs during 2013 to 2020 from the Thomson Financial Insider Trading Database. Uh, that covers more than 1,600 CEOs at more than 1,300 public firms. We obtained data on compensation and corporate governance from Executive and Institutional Shareholder Service, uh, stock price accounting data from Chris and CompuStat, analyst estimates from IBES, and the litigation data from the Stanford Law School Securities uh, Class Action Clearinghouse. Let me go through a little bit on the summary statistics. Uh, the median market capitalization of firms in our sample is about $5 billion. Uh, on the, uh, the transaction characteristics, the mean transactions uh, involve around 38,000 shares uh, with a mean value of about $3 million. About 61% of the, of the transactions are executed under the 10 b 5 one plan. The average uh, return during the 40 trading days before the stock sales is around 2% positive. And the average return over the 40 trading days after the sales is about negative 1.5. So it's going up before the sales and going down after the sales. The mean annual compensation of CEO in our sample is around $8.5 million. Before the sale, the CEO owns about 2% of the firm common stocks outstanding. So while a rule 10 v 5 one plan can actually provide an affirmative defense against some allegations of trading on inside information, the fact that we can uncover around 38.6% of the sales in our sample that are executed outside of the plan suggests that there must be some cost that offset the benefit of using the plan. So we first investigate the characteristics of stock sales under the rule 10 v 5 one plan versus the non-plan. How are they different? So to do so, we uh, build a binary logic model in which the explanatory variable is one if the trade or the transaction is under the plan and is zero if it's not under the plan. As mentioned before, around 61% of the trades in our sample are conducted under the plan. And the explanatory variables that we have include firm size, characteristics, uh, governance, a CEO transaction characteristics, and uh, uh, financial disclosure characteristics. So first we find that the transactions that are executed under the plan is more likely when the firm has more growth options as proxy by Tobin SKU, when the firm has higher litigation risk, when the stock return volatility is pretty high, when the majority of the board of directors was elected after the CEO is in the office, and when the firm has more independent directors. And trades under the plan also represent a smaller proportion of shares owned by the CEO. The likelihood of plan use by the CEOs uh, might reflect some uh, greater career concern among those executives if the value of protection afforded by trading under the plan is positively related to the CEO's career horizon. So career concerns, both internal and external, are usually greatest for younger managers. And we also find that trades under the 10B5-1 plan are more likely before news announcements. So now let's have a look at opportunistic behavior by top executives under the Rule 10 b 5 one plan. So the original intention is the Rule 10 b 5 one plan should eliminate all opportunistic behavior. 
but is that the case? So while the evidence reviewed that a number of firm transaction to CO characteristics are related to the likelihood that this rule, uh, 25-1 plan sale, but it doesn't provide insights on what the potential impact of plan adoption on stockholder wealth. So now we need to have a look at stock return around the, the sales date. So to obtain the insight, we compute the cumulative abnormal return over the 40 trading days leading up to the sales in our sample and the cumulative abnormal return over the 40 trading days follow every sale. So the plot here is for the subsamples of planned trade versus non-planned trade. So the solid line represent the stock return for trades under the rule 10.5-1 plan is going up before the sales day and going down after the sales day. The dashed line represents the stock return of trades not under the 10.5-1 plan. So we see here that uh, non-planned sales are preceded by a larger average run-up and then followed by a larger average price decline than this trace under the plan. So although the level of opportunistic behavior that we observe for planned trade is less than that for non-planned trade, it's still significant. So if you have a look at the dash line, uh, the, the solid line here, which represent the stock return for sales under the plan is positively significant going up before the trade and is positively, it's significantly going down after the trade. So we see that planned sales actually exhibit evidence of opportunism, but less opportunism before versus after compared to trades outside of the plan. So the plan is working as intended by the regulators, but opportunism evidence is still there. So it doesn't eliminate the opportunism by top executive totally. But this evidence actually doesn't provide any insights on whether there is cross-section variation in the effectiveness of the rule 10 v 5 plans with regarding to controlling opportunistic behavior. So to address this question, uh, we investigate whether the evidence of opportunistic selling varies with the CEO's incentives to engage in such behavior. Right, so for this analysis, we measure CEO incentive as the ratio of transaction value to the CEO's total compensation in the fiscal year immediately preceding the sale. With the notion that uh, generally uh, research report evidence that uh, wealthy in, uh, less wealthy insiders are more likely to behave opportunistically when selling shares. So on the left chart, we plot stock return for planned sales breaking down by whether it's a high incentive sales or not. And on the right chart, we do the same for sales outside of the plan. So as you see that the chart suggests that rule 10 5 one plans are associated with a smaller gain from sales following stock price run up. But for CEOs who have a lot of stake, the financial impact of uh, opportunistic plan sales before stock price decline is comparable to that for non-plan sales. So as you can see that uh, the dashed line is the stock return for high CEO incentive on the left chart is for the trade under the plan and for the right chart, is for the trade outside of the plan. You see that the stock price is dropping at the same magnitude for whether the trade is under the plan or outside of the plan. So when the CEO has high incentive to engage in such behavior, the plan actually doesn't work as is, is intended to do so. The second problem we have is possible trade misclassification. 
it's very interesting that the SEC form for filings don't require disclosure of whether a stock sales was executed under the plan or not. And our ability to identify plan usage depends on voluntary disclosures by the selling CEO. A particular stock sale might not be identified as being executed under the plan because there is no plan or because the plan exists, but the CEO doesn't disclose it. So the solutions we have for this possible trade misclassification is we kind of find some pseudo plan trades using propensity score matching and perform the analysis using restricted stock sales. When a sales is conducted as a restricted stock sales, the plan use require disclosure in form 144. So the CEO has to disclose whether the trade of rest restricted stock sales is under the rule 10B5-1 plan or not. So the next part, we try to uncover the channel that the CEO can behave opportunistically under the Rule 25-1 plan. Uh, earlier research showed that uh, ineffective internal control over financial reporting is likely to be related to the profitability of insider trading. So first we look at the evidence on the change in the quality of financial statement disclosures from the fiscal year before the CEO stock sales to the fiscal year that it includes the sale. And the evidence in uh, this uh, table shows that the change in disclosure quality tend to be better at firms with Rule 35-1 plan than at firms with non-plan sales. But the improvement in the quality of disclosure among plan sales is negatively related to CEO incentive. And the similarity of the absolute value of the coefficient estimates for the plan indicator and the interaction between the plan and CEO incentive suggests that the level of opportunistic changes in disclosure among CEOs who are selling within plans and that have high incentives to behave this way is similar to that among CEOs who are not selling within the plan. So in addition to the change in disclosure quality, we also examine accounting accruals and real earnings management around stock sales. Uh, chart three and chart four uh, in this slide shows the differences in the change in accrual for sales under the plan, which is chart three, and those uh, other sales under the plan. And where incentives is, in the other three quarters. So the shading in this chart actually indicate whether in each quarter, the accruals for top quartile CEO incentive sales under the plan are significantly different from the accruals for other sales executed within plans in the same quarter. So overall, these charts suggest that uh, when CEOs have a lot of stake, they tend to sell when accruals have recently risen substantially, but the outlook for the future is less opportunistic. So in other words, CEOs who have a lot of stake are more likely to take advantage of inside information with respect to future performance, even when executing a planned sale. And in this case, they appear to trade ahead of near-term declines in accounting performance. And to put that into the perspective of uh, multivariate regression, we look at earnings management uh, and the plan use and the CEO incentive. The first two models present multivariate uh, evidence on OLS regression on the difference in accounting accruals between rule use and non plan stock sales by the CEO. Uh, discretionary accruals which is accrual created to manipulate changes in reported earnings that are of concern. These type of accruals uh, include using increasing or decreasing estimate of bad debt reserve, warranty costs, inventory write down. So from the fiscal year before the trade until the fiscal year uh, in which the trade takes place, uh, the coefficient in model one and two show that both discretionary accrual declines more for planned sales than non-planned sales. 
and accrual earnings management is higher during the year before the sale for trades under the plan. And in the same test, the negative coefficient of the 10B5 plan interacted with CO incentive indicates that accrual earnings management is even greater when the CEO that trades under the plan has a lot of money at stake. In model three to model five, uh, we use the same setup, but we change the dependent variable to real transaction-based earnings management. Uh, example of those are the timing of sales equipment that will result in gain in a quarter in which the extra earnings are needed or delaying repair, advertising, research and development expenses, and foregoing capital projects that have a positive net present value. So overall, we find similar evidence that uh, uh, Rule 35 plan sales are associated with a decrease in real activity management from fiscal year before the trade until the fiscal year that the trade takes place, which means that real activity earnings management was higher before in the year before the sales. So overall, uh, we find a CEO might be exercising their discretion over financial reporting by influencing act roles and real activity disclosure to circumvent their inability to precisely time the stock sales under the plan. And finally, we look at whether corporate governance can uh, be effective in curbing opportunistic trades uh, by opportunistic trades, we mean trades not under the plan or high incentive trades under the plan. So these are where the evidence that we uncover the CEO is taking uh, advantage of inside information. So the first question we ask is, is good corporate governance effective in curbing opportunistic trades not under the plan? So each of the five models here report evidence on the relation between a different corporate governance measure and the stock price, stock return of the company during the 40 trading days following the stock sales. And the coefficients estimated in all of those models in this table show that governance measure themselves are not significantly related to post-sale car, but the a coefficient estimate for the indicator variables of plan versus no plan sales are actually negative and significant in all models. While the sum of the coefficient estimate for the non 10 5 plan and the interaction with corporate governance is insignificantly different from zero in all models. So overall, these results imply that good corporate governance can actually substitute for the presence of the plan in controlling opportunistic behavior that take advantage of anticipated post-sale declines in the firm stock sales. And the second question is whether good corporate governance can be effective in curbing high incentive trades that are executed under the plan. So we conduct the same setup as before, but for a subsample of trades under the plan. And the coefficient estimate in this table indicate that overall, this high CEO incentive is negatively related to the post-sale stock performance when the trade is executed under the plan. But the fact that only one of the five, a few corporate governance uh, measure is significantly related. Uh, and the overall summation joint effect of high incentive and the interaction of high incentive and governance uh, are all still significant. That means that good corporate governance here cannot undo the effect of opportunism uh, among the CEOs when they execute the trace under the plan when they have high incentive. So to conclude, uh, Rule 10b5-1 plans is more likely to be used when litigation risk is high, uncertainty about stock price is high, and the sale is scheduled before the release of material non-public information. Overall, 
Uh, the plant cells are associated with less opportunistic behavior than non-plant cells, but this is not true when the CO has a lot at stake. And our examination of disclosure quality, accounting accruals, measure of real activities, and earnings announcement shows that CEOs with strong incentives actually trade on material non-public information, even under the plan. And good corporate governance can substitute for the presence of the plan in limiting opportunism, but only when the CEOs don't have very strong incentive to behave opportunistically. So our research called for some uh, uh, policy changes that this Rule 10b5-1 plan really needs serious uh, consideration. Uh, the first one point is on the cooling off periods. Uh, the SEC should uh, consider impose some mandatory waiting period before the establishment of the plan and the date that the initial trade is going to be made. In terms of disclosure requirement, uh, the SEC may consider disclosed disclose the adoption, the modification, cancellation through a press release for the firm or inform 8K filing. On the plan characteristics, uh, probably the SEC should consider that a plan should be established when insiders don't possess material non-public information. Uh, no multiple plans should be allowed and the plan duration should be specified. And once the plan is set up, then the trace outside of the plan should be limited to avoid opportunism. All right, thank you very much for uh, listening to the talk and I hope you find the, the talk very helpful. If you have any question, feel free to contact me by email.